Yum, yum! Hi, Matt from Pixel Fondue here. Welcome to the final fifth episode in this series of tutorials. In this tutorial, I will look at creating render passes and rendering out of Modo and compositing them in After Effects. This is the process for this project, which I found works best to suit the characters. There are many ways to do this, as with all the rigging and animation tutorials I have uploaded, so I hope it helps you in some way. Okay, to get started, we have the animated ladybug on the leaf, which is tracked. I have modeled a very simple leaf as the ground plane. This doesn't need to be perfectly matched to the background as it is only needed for the shadows and the GI bounce color. In the render tab, which I like to use, we have the default final color and alpha outputs, which we will use. Here are the materials for the ladybug and the leaf model. I like to change the name to make it shorter. FC is fine for final color. Alpha all for this one. At this point, let's add the other outputs I need. First is the depth output. Next is the shadow density. And finally, ambient occlusion, AO for short. Turning on the preview render, we can see the ladybug and leaf, and leaf lit with the default settings. We have a directional light and the default environment. So let's load an environment from the default presets. Hit F6 on the keyboard to bring up the presets. I found that Outdoor Probe 8 in the environments works best for me. So double click on that and it will load it into the scene. It already looks much better. Opening the environment, we can see that an HDR image has been added. I usually turn off visible to camera here because I am not using the environment map in the final comp, just for global illumination. I need to look at the background plate to see which direction the light is coming from, and we can see that it is mostly coming from behind the garden set in this direction. So I need to rotate the HDR around to match it as best I can. There is a highlight here from the directional light, so I will just turn this off for now. The HDR image has a sun, you can see it here in the image. I need to rotate the texture locator around in the Y axis to move that sun position. At around 120 degrees, the sun position is at the back of the ladybug. So let's just keep rotating it around a bit. I don't want the character's face to be in complete shadow, so I can cheat it and rotate it a bit more. So I can get some light on his face a bit more like this. Let's make it a bit brighter. 1.3 is probably best for now. Okay. Now for the directional light position and setting. We can see the highlight on the wings of the ladybug, so I will make this as unnoticeable as possible. Changing the intensity to one should be good. Let's bring back the leaf so we can see the shadow. Also add a bit of yellow into the color, which would help, I think. Now to get rid of the sharp edge of the shadow, we need to change the spread angle. Changing it to 60, degree, 60 degrees gives me a really soft shadow, which is too soft. Let's bring it back to about 15 degrees. Okay, now for the leaf. We don't want it to be visible like this in the render, so we need to add a shader item to the mesh. This allows me to control the visibility and a heap of other settings only for this item. Firstly, the leaf is not casting any shadows. We don't want it to be visible to camera for now and we want it to be a shadow catcher in the alpha type. The color and that will still bounce off with the GI onto the character though. This is a powerful tool in the Inamoto rendering toolkit. All right, let's set up the other outputs. Firstly is the shadow output. I want this output to only have the shadow on the leaf. So the best way to do this is to drag the output into the leaf material group like this. Now let's look at the render settings. The footage I shot with the mobile phone I used to shoot the background is in 4K, and we have 209 frames. Next in the settings, change the anti-aliasing to 16 samples to give us better edges on the model renders. Then increase all these settings to 256 for now. We don't need reflection or subsurface. For close-up shots, these would have to be larger, even up to 1024 1, sometimes. But 256 is fine for this shot. Next in global illumination, the indirect samples number is the same as, as in the settings tab. 
I am only going to go with one bounce for this as it is an open air shot. So there are no bounces from walls, etc. The environment importance sampling is good to have as it works with the HDRI map and increasing this value will decrease noise picked up from the HDRI in the reflections. So to make sure, let's double this number. For irradiance caching, I only need it for the second bounce with the settings at 256 for this shot. This range value is good to set for the distance a light sample will travel and then be killed. So they don't fly off into infinity and increase render times. For this scene, 200 millimeters is more than far enough. Now I just want to give a shout out to Richard Yott, who has some fantastic rendering and material tutorials and products to help with rendering. I bought rendering animation and it helped me a lot in understanding rendering in Modo. So definitely check it out. He has a heap of great stuff. Okay, one of the settings I got from this tutorial is this secondary raise percentage here, which defaults at 25%. So change that to 100%. Now let's give the outputs a path and format. I mostly use PNGs for the normal render formats. 16-bit PNG for the extra color information I can play with in comp is great to use. For the depth, I will use 32-bit float EXR formats, as it holds a lot of depth information, which I will show you later in After Effects. For ambient occlusion, just normal P uh, PNG is fine. So with all the output set, I then create render passes. First, we need to create a pass group. I'll call it LB passes. Type is render passes, and mode is empty for now. So we can see that it has added a group here. So now let's add the passes. We have the final color pass. Click on auto here, and let's make sure only the final color and alpha is selected. Then let's turn off the background, imp, background footage, as we don't need that in the render. So next, let's create the ambient occlusion pass, the AO pass. Everything defaults back to the original setting, so turn off everything except AO. We need to turn back on the visible to camera in the leaf shader, so we can now see the AO pass on the leaf. In the AO settings, let's up the occlusion rays to 128, if it makes it smoother. We don't need to see the AO on the side of the leaf here, so change the range to about, I don't know, 60 millimeters. Okay, in the render settings, turn off GI. We don't need that. For this composite, I only want the AO cast by the character onto the leaf. I don't want the AO for the character because that's in the final color. So let's add an item shader to the geo folder containing the mesh items of the ladybug. So now I can control the visibility of all the character's mesh items with one shader. Go into the texture layers tab and turn on visible to camera. Now we only see the AO on the leaf. We can turn down the anti-aliasing as well. Click apply and then let's move on to the next pass settings. Create a pass for the shadows. We can see in the lady passes group, final color, the ambient occlusion and shadow passes. Okay, it's gone back to the default settings again. So go through and hide AO, depth, alpha and final color, leaving only shadow for the leaf mesh. Check all the light settings to make sure they are all good. In the preview render, we see nothing. So go into the shader for the leaf item and turn on visible to camera. We now see the leaf with a white spot for where the inverted shadow of the ladybug is. This leaf is all white because global illumination is on. So go in and turn that off. Now we only see the inverted shadow of the ladybug but I don't want to see the ladybug here again. I only want to see the shadow. Go into the ladybug group shader and turn off visible to camera. Camera. Now we only see the shadow. We can lower the anti-aliasing as well. This will speed up the render slightly. I often just turn off all the settings for the environment too. Last render output is the depth. Create a new pass called depth pass. Select depth in the preview render. Again, all defaults return, so go through and turn off everything except depth. Turn off GI. 
then turn on visible to camera in the leaf mesh shader. So now everything is white. Change the anti-aliasing to eight samples and then turn off the settings for the environment. Now go into the depth settings and tick remap pixel values. This gives you a depth measurement from the camera to the items in the scene. Change the maximum depth to your liking. Here we could go with about 2.3 meters, I think. Okay, let's check the render passes. We have AO, inverted shadow, final color, and depth passes set up. So let's render them out. Selecting the first pass for final color, go to render and render animation. The frame range is set up, so we just need to leave everything at the default and click OK. As the renderer will only render the currently selected pass in the pass groups. OK, I am going to skip ahead the renders, but just make sure that you select the pass you want and then render that animation out. Do it for all the pass settings. OK, now in After Effects. Let's bring in the footage, file, import, and navigate to the renders. First is the AO pass, which I have already rendered out for the series. Click on a file in the sequence, make sure PNG sequence is selected, and import. Next, scroll down and find the EXR sequence for the depth pass. Then the final color pass. And finally, the shadow pass. Select all of those sequences and drag them, in, drag them onto the comp icon here and a new comp is created that is set at the settings and length of the imported files. Rename the comp and then select all the sequences and place them in their own folder to keep things clean. Make sure the comp is at 32 bits per channel, float. After Effects defaults to 8 bits per channel. The depth pass needs that setting so we can access all the information contained in the EXR format. OK, let's look at the timeline and reorder the sequences to how we need them. Final color needs to be on top, then shadow, then ambient occlusion, and the depth pass can go on the bottom. Great, now let's bring in the background pass. I have exported a TIFF sequence for the background. PNG or TIFF are fine. Click ignore alpha and import it into the comp. Drag this layer just above the depth pass. I like the shadow to be under the AO pass actually. It doesn't matter, just my preference. So with the shadow, we need to invert the render. Go to effects and type in invert. Then drag that over to the shadow layer. Turn off the AO layer for now. It will invert the white and black. Change the mode to multiply. The white will become transparent and now we have control over the opacity of the shadow pass. Hit T on the keyboard to bring up the opacity and make it around uh, no, 34% maybe. Turn on the AO layer and change its mode to multiply as well. So now you have a good ambient occlusion and shadow under the character. Hit T again and change the opacity to how you like it. I reckon around 39% is fine for this shot. Each shot is different, so this percentage is really what you think looks best. Scrolling along, we see that the ladybug is locked to the leaf and it is integrated well into the scene with lighting and shadows. Depth of field for this shot can be used, but we won't see the effect much, so I will show you that in a greater detail in another shot. But first, let's color grade this shot a bit. Add an adjustment layer. I like to rename it CC for color correction but it's more like a color grade. Let's put uh, curves on it and do a, phys a typical S curve grade to get a bit more contrast. Then I sometimes put another effect over the top like a shadow highlight effect. Turn off auto and play with those settings a little and that gives me a look that I like. This isn't a 32-bit effect but neither is the background footage here. I just put it on sometimes because I like, it, I like the effect it gives by toning down some of the highlight in the scene. OK, let me show you how the final composition turned out, which I used in the Ladybug animation episode. The only difference really is that I added a slight vignette to the scene to darken the edges a little. I use Lumetri for this, as it has a nice vignette effect. I often use Lumetri for more complex colour grading, but this shot doesn't need it. 
Okay, here is the second shot in that sequence. The ladybug close-up. Shot again with a mobile phone and a special macro lens attachment. Love that phone, it takes great 4K video. This macro shot gives us a great chance to look at depth of field. Here I put on a particular effect, particle field, just to give a look of particles flying around, which helps to sell the shot. I have the same layers as before, and here is the depth layer for this comp. It has been pre-composed, but we can do the same here on the, just the normal layer sequence. In fact, I'll drag the depth sequence here and show you how I used it to create the depth of field effect. You can see here that there are different gradients of gray here over the character and ground. First of all, let's put on a 32-bit exposure effect on it. This will allow me to reveal or hide the image. The 32-bit float EXR file keeps all the information from the render, even if we can't see it here. Let me show you. Expand these three values and then have a play around with them. The distance from the camera through 3D perspective is saved in the EXR. So let's look at making the head of the ladybug as bright as we can with a gray gradient going back in space, like this. You can play around with the settings to make the gradient shorter or longer. Okay, let's bring back the footage and sequences. We can see that the depth of field is very shallow here. So we want to see the back of the ladybug blurred. The FL depth of field effect shown here is a commercial plugin I use for this effect because it has really cool features, but I'll show you that in a bit. Let's do this effect first with the camera blur effect that comes with After Effects. Default settings makes the whole image blurred. Under the blur map, just select the depth sequence we just looked at. And because we adjusted with an effect, we need to change the source to include effects and masks. Let's now increase the effect so we can see it here more clearly. Then click on Invert. There you go. Now the head is in focus and the rear of the character is blurred gradually. Turning on the other layers brings back the shadows and uh, ambient occlusion. Now this is looking much better. I often move the effect onto an adjustment layer so the blur will affect all layers underneath, like the shadows and the particles too. So let's move it to the CC layer. Once we turn the layer on, we can see that depth of field is affecting all the layers and looks awesome. We can adjust the exposure settings on the depth layer to adjust the gradient of depth, but this is looking nice. After Effects Blur often has a strange effect on the edges of things, and I wanted to find a better way, a better plugin to achieve this effect and found this one. Let me introduce you to the depth of field plugin from this company Fritsch, Frisch Chulof, Frisch Chuloft. I think that's German. That's probably not how you pronounce it. So sorry, I came across this plugin looking for a better way to do depth of field in After Effects. It is a little pricey, but do check it out. Here's why. Back in After Effects, I can turn on the effect and it works in a similar way to the camera lens blur. You need to select the depth layer, but what is so great about this one is that I can set the depth I want to use by selecting these crosshairs and clicking on the image anywhere. Now back on his face. Let's set up the radius to emphasize this and select the guy's foot here. Now the focus is on his foot. This is an awesome tool for when you want to do rack focus camera effects in your animations because you can keyframe the focal point here. Like I said, it's a little bit expensive, but well worth it just for that feature. Okay, so that brings me to the end of this series of tutorials. I hope I have given you some insight into the power of Modo, Character Box, and After Effects in creating your projects. Here are some shots I have completed for my children's show. If you want to see more, visit my Instagram and YouTube accounts. Links below, and uh, yeah, please leave a comment. Thanks for watching. Yum, yum.